Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. See, God's love is demonstrated to us through the ministry or the ministration of His Word. If the Word of God comes to you, it's a sign, a very important sign, that God loves you. If He loves you, He will speak to you. If you're His own, He will speak to you. If you don't hear the voice of God at all, it's either of two things. Either He is speaking and you are not paying attention, so you are not hearing, or you don't hear Him at all. Now, if you don't hear Him at all, there's a big problem. See, it's better He's speaking and you're not hearing. And you're not hearing because you're not paying attention. But if He doesn't speak to you at all, then there is a problem with your identity. Because Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. I'm telling you this because you must pay attention to the voice of God. You must pay attention to the word of God. When I say the word of God, I always stress it. I'm referring to the voice of God coming to you. I know lots of preachers will tell you, read your Bible. God speaks to you in the Bible. Listen, don't get it twisted. Reading the Bible is not the same thing as hearing the voice of God. You can hear, most likely, hear the voice of God while you are reading the Bible. The words in the Bible is not the one that you say God is speaking to you. But you can read a word in the scriptures and your ears will be open to hear the voice of God. The one that carries power is that which you hear not that which you read. For the scripture says, faith cometh by hearing, not by reading. Faith comes by hearing. And he's not saying you hear another person. He's saying you hear God. But then, all these other forms, listening to a message, listening to a preacher preach to you physically, listening to a message via um, uh, multimedia, like audio, video, whatever it means, it, and then reading the Bible, they are all atmospheres that are set up for you to hear the voice of God. But don't miss the most important thing of all. In all these things, you must hear His voice. I can never sound this enough. I can never say it until I can never say it enough until you understand it and begin to bear the fruit of hearing His voice. Praise God. I know we're going to have a great day, but before we go into today's broadcast, can we call forth our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now and declare this. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now then, I was sharing something important to you yesterday. We are still talking about the book being opened. So I was sharing with you yesterday. The word of the Lord came to me while I was studying or reading rather. There's a difference between reading and studying. I told you how um, the, the, the word of the Lord came to me concerning this month. You know, my dad had called me and said, because I've been asking the Lord, 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 what should we look at for the month of October? And then my, my dad just calls me and said, do you have your Bible with you? Turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 5 and begin to read from verse 1. That's the word of the Lord for the month of October. Like, okay. <laughs> it's like, okay. We didn't discuss that I was looking for the word of the Lord for the month. But that's how God does his things, see? Now, he spoke now that's a human being that spoke to me and referred me somewhere i want you to catch this he referred me somewhere now i know i have enough sense and god knows i have enough sense to know that the reading of that scripture i'm not going to take it that this is the word of the lord but then i understand that when god directs you somewhere it's because he's going to speak to you when you get there you remember Jeremiah and the rest of them. God will say, go to the potter's house 
and I will show you something there. And then he goes to the potter's house. He sees the potter spinning the meal. And then he, you know, while watching, suddenly, he doesn't go there and say, hmm, hmm, I have seen the potter. Oh, potter, potter, how are you doing? Is this how you make it? I want you to teach me. God sent me here that you should teach me. No, sir. No. He got there and he was waiting for something. He was waiting for the word of the Lord. And then the word of the Lord came. See that now? And then the word of the Lord came. So when God directs you somewhere, be smart. Look for his voice. That's what you're looking for. So if he tells you somewhere, you go there, you're looking. So that's the same way. You know, I went to the scripture and I was opening it. Then the word of the Lord came to me. And the Lord began to speak to me. So yesterday I was sharing with you, it's akin to when he said, eyes have not seen. So the opening of the book, he is saying the own edited version of God's purpose for your life. And brothers and sisters, eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard it. It has not entered into the heart of any man. The things that God have laid up for those who love him. So he is talking about you. So God is unveiling in these days the things that no one have understood yet about you. God is unveiling in this month the things that no eye have seen. It has not even entered into the heart of anyone. Praise God. Now for that to happen in your life, you've got to take certain responsibilities from the Lord. You see that so prophecies don't just come for you to sit and fold your arms and be waiting and shaking your legs and say, oh, God have spoken. I always tell people this. When a prophecy comes, how you know that the fulfillment is near is that that prophecy will come out with an instruction. It will come with an instruction. Now, it is the doing of the instruction that seals up the manifestation of that prophecy. See that? So prophecies come with instructions. So the instructions of that prophecy is what's, um, what's going to stir the manifestation. So if you don't get instructions, now instructions are your own role in that prophecy. You must find your role in that prophecy. You know, God spoke to Abraham, say, oh, your children are going to be in a foreign land. And they're going to be there for 400 years. And after 400 years, now that, that was just a prophecy that was given to him. When? He didn't know. Which of his children? You know it wasn't Isaac. Praise God. It was in Jacob's time. The, towards the end of Jacob's life, actually, that they went into Egypt. See that now? Now, they got into Egypt. And then they were just there. They were, they were fulfilling prophecy. God said they will be in there. They will, they will be there for 400 years. They will be tormented for 400 years. And they got in there. Not that they were minding the oh God said we will go into a foreign land. Maybe this is the foreign land. When they were doing that, I'm sure no one thought. Because if you, if you remember and say that you're going to go into a place and you'll be tormented for 400 days, I don't think you want to go there. <laughs> So you see, that's why I always tell people also that the fulfillment of prophecy is on God. It's not because you are too mindful. No, it's on God. Sometimes when you even get too mindful, you extend the timing of that prophecy because your mindfulness will make you go against that word that has been given. But then you see, when the season came for that prophecy, instructions followed. God met Moses in the back in the desert and said, look, my, I have heard the cry of my children. I am sending you now. You will go and tell Pharaoh this. What's that? Instruction. And Moses went and, oh, let my people go. You know all the back and forth they were going. They were going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then finally, God said, this is what you are going to do. God gave instruction consigning what they should do. So he said, look, kill the animal. Everybody stay indoors. And now that happened. The firstborns of Egypt was killed. Then next, God gave another instruction. He says, go to the house of the Egyptians and go tell them to give you all this stuff because Pharaoh is going to let you go. So when the time of the fulfillment came, 
it came with instructions so always look out for instructions when god speaks to you about any prophetic word always look for i don't say go read about instructions no in the words of prophecy receive instructions from the lord that's so important very very important so now concerning the word that the lord have given to us for this month the lord continued by giving certain instructions that i'm about to uh, begin to teach and share with you these things are so important some of you may be hearing it for the first time some of you may have heard these teachings before but then you're going to be hearing it in another dimension i believe one thing when god gives his word it is fresh when god commands you to do something when god commands me to teach it to me, it is always fresh praise god so follow me gradually i'm going to be taking you through some scriptures to give you an, a clear understanding now turn your bibles with me to proverbs chapter 8 proverbs chapter 8 thank you holy spirit proverbs chapter 8 and verse 34 i want you to listen to this it says blessed is the man who listens to me now who's speaking here wisdom is speaking now now who's wisdom wisdom is the holy spirit wisdom is the lord is he is the one praise god he is the one now study study this whole chapter and you will study this chapter and i think let me let me put it this way i've done it sometime i think i thought we did it sometime in this broadcast or maybe it was faith and the word of god will interchange so now study this whole chapter proverbs chapter 8 and instead of the word wisdom put the holy spirit and see the kind of meaning it's going to make to you now watch this now verse 34 proverbs 8 blessed is the man that listens to me listens to who the holy spirit blessed is the man that listens to me watching daily at my gates take note of the, that word at my gates plural watching daily at my gates so blessed is the man who listens to me who's watching daily at my gates waiting at the post of my doors he used plural again he didn't say at my door he says he didn't say at my gates he says at my gates and then he says at my door okay then he says for whoever finds me find life and obtains favor from the lord if you find me if you find the holy spirit you find life because he is the one through which the word of the lord is transmitted to us so he says, if you find me, you find life and you obtain favor from the Lord. If you will find wisdom. Now, this wisdom is not just talking about the, the, the uh, application of knowledge. <laughs> no, he's talking about a person. If you find me, meaning now when you say find him, what do you find about him? It is him that will give you the words of wisdom it is him that will tell you what to do see that so now take note of this it says watching daily at wait watching daily at my gates watching daily at my gates now what does this tell you it tells you the holy spirit has gates now what are his gates so when you read something like this say oh, watching daily at my gates okay oh, i don't know what that means but then i think he's just saying pray and ask god for wisdom it sounds like that but there's something i'm going to be sharing with you now this is something the lord had taught me for a while and i've been putting it to work but you see when the lord began to instruct me to teach on this recently he brought another dimension to it now you see that's one thing about living with the lord and when you understand that jesus truly said without him you can do nothing that word is so powerful he says if you abide in me and my words abide in you you shall ask 
He said, you shall ask. He didn't say, ask. He said, you shall ask. Meaning, it's a prophecy. This is what is going to happen when you abide in me. You will be prompted to ask anything in my name. And I will do it for you. So when you dwell with him, he begins to take you through a journey. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. And in all, he's bringing you up in the whole counsel of the Lord. Making you to understand what his will is. Now this is what should be happening in every believer's life. Every believer's life. You're supposed to be going through this experience. The Lord taking you here a little, there a little. I often say this. Jesus left us in the hands of the Holy Spirit. He didn't leave us in the hands of any pastor. He didn't leave us in the hands of any book. He didn't leave us in the hands of the Bible. He left us in the hands of a person. He says, I go away, but the comforter will come. When he comes, he will teach you all things. So I ask you, what Jesus said in your life, is it true? Are you receiving teachings from the Holy Spirit concerning all things? Jesus said when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. So I ask you, have you been guided into the path of truth? Are you following the path of truth? Jesus would not tell a lie. And if he said something, then it is the truth and then he means it. So we should be looking out for the experience in your life. Praise God. So now he's speaking. He said, look, blessed is the man that listens to me. Mm. That means blessed is the man that pays attention to me. So you want to be a blessed person? Simple. He's told you what to do. Pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying. In Revelation, John kept, the, the, the Lord kept speaking, tell, talking to John. He said, blessed, he says, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Is saying to the church. Not what the Holy Spirit has said. Is saying to the church. Why? Does he use that statement, present continuous? It's because the church or us are meant to live by every word that is proceeding from the mouth of God. So here also when he says, blessed is the one who waits at my gates, one who listens to me, who listens to me, not who listened to me, who listens, present continuous. You keep listening and listening and listening. And then he says, watching daily at my gates. I'm going to be explaining this from tomorrow. What those gates are and what his door or what, what his doors are. Praise God. Listen to me. I tell you one truth. The Lord is about to change your life in a way no one has ever imagined before. I'm telling you this. Doesn't matter what you have been through. Doesn't matter where you have been or where you are right now. There is a change coming in your life that is going to perplex even you. Because even you never would have imagined what God is going to do with you. I pray for you right now. Father, we're entering into the area of instructions that you began to give. Lord, more than anything else, let the eyes of everyone listening to me right now be opened. Guide their lives into these things that we're going to be talking about. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take them and lead them into that path that only you have ordained for them, even today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget, you can't miss tomorrow. Praise God. Bye.